This video is sponsored by Describe. Across the lifespan of my channel, I've made more than 150 videos. And over the course of a lot of these videos, I keep using a certain phrase over and over when talking about various aspects of tabletop games. This is something you can talk about in your Session Zero. And the unintended side effect is that the idea of a Session Zero starts getting more and more daunting. It seems like there's so much to cover and you don't know where to start. So today I'm going to put together a rubric of the discussion points I feel you should cover in your Session Zero to help give you a framework for this session. And this is going to be an actual document that you can download from my Patreon. The link is in the doobly-doo below. You can either type your answers into this document and share it with your players, or read from this document as you run your session zero. But this document specifically leaves not a ton of room in each field because your goal is not necessarily to declare the be-all, end-all answers to everything here. To quote Jenny D's video on the subject, a session zero is not a monologue to your players, it's a conversation with them. Now this is my best effort to put together a comprehensive tool so you can run your own session zero, but of course it's very possible you'll feel something is missing. That's totally fine. Feel free to just use this as a jumping off point for your own approach. Heck, it's actually equally possible that I'll think of something further down the line as it pops up in another video. I don't need to figure out how to fit it into this document. And that's okay, this document might evolve over time. I might make another version to incorporate other aspects of session zeros. I might even end up making a whole other video if it seems warranted. But it's okay to change your approach to a Session Zero over time as we continue to run more games and learn more about the RPG community. First, the top of the form has some basics. If your campaign is a title, it can go here. But besides that, the core questions are, who's running the game? What system are we playing? How often do we want to play? And how long might this campaign run? We can't possibly cover everything you need to know about scheduling in this video or on this worksheet, but this is a good place to start. As the GM, how long do you expect slash hope to run this game? How often are you planning to play? Asking people to commit to a weekly game for a few months, or a monthly game for a year, or a weekly game for three years are very different levels of commitment. Next, the campaign pitch. Think of this like the movie trailer for your campaign. What, if anything, should your players know before the game? If this is going to be a gothic horror adventure, or a goofy space opera, or a dramatic game about moody teens brooding near their lockers, your players should know that before anything else. Next, we have a section for the most relevant details about the setting itself. I've said before that you should keep this section light. Don't go overboard in downloading everything you've established about your homebrew world. For more advice on that front, check out this video about how a little world building can go a long way. Then we get a section on the character creation guidelines. Some examples you can include here might be things like, how will we generate our character statistics? Are there any books or resources that are off limits? I've got a whole series of videos about the material people ban in their games, and it's a subject that we will surely come back to a lot. But you should make sure your players know whether or not third-party content is permitted, and whether you're banning certain races or subclasses or spells or whatever the equivalence might be for whatever game system you're playing. This sheet is system agnostic. Additionally, here might be a good place to include a link to any virtual tabletop or online character creator portal your players might need. By the way, if you want to use a digital tabletop, but you're running a home game and you find it daunting to source maps and details that you can drop into your game, then I think you should check out today's sponsor, Describe. Describe is a wonderful website where a team of fantastic writers create descriptions of monsters, magic items, NPCs, spells, locations, and more. And they also release these fantastic maps, and each section of the map has a description attached, so you can run an even more immersive game. And these maps are set up to integrate with Foundry, so if that's your VTT of choice, then there's hardly anything you need to do in order to bring these gorgeous environments to life in your own game. And Describe is offering a discount to the viewers of this channel. If you visit Describe.com supergeek and use the promo code supergeek at checkout, you can save 10% off of your first subscription payment. Once again, that's DSCRYB.com supergeek and use the promo code supergeek. Thanks so much to Describe for sponsoring this video. The next section of my Session Zero worksheet gives you an option for safety tools. I personally recommend you include one safety tool that can be done in preparation for the campaign, such as establishing lines and veils or sharing a checklist people can fill out, and then another safety tool the players can employ during a session, like the X card, or being able to pause for a moment to discuss things. I usually recommend you handle all safety tool-related discussions in a separate document. As an example, I've included a link in the doobly-doo to my own safety checklist for my new Curse of Strahd campaign. Then I recommend you share any house rules you're planning to implement. It's not at all uncommon for all of us to come up with some house rules, but keeping them all straight can be a pain in the butt. Putting them in text can be really useful for remembering them. And then there's a second category specific to dice rules. For example, how do you handle criticals and critical failures? Will there be any secret rolls? What about secret death saving throws? Are floor rolls allowed? 
I found that a lot of us have strong opinions about dice that we might not even consider to be house rules, so that's why they get their own category, just to make sure that everybody is on the same page. The last few questions help you and your players all get on the same page about your expectations for the game. First, how will leveling up work? Sure, at its core, this might just be a question of milestone leveling versus XP, but how will you get XP? Are there pre-planned plot beats that will unlock milestone leveling? Giving players an idea in advance is a really good idea, so they can adjust their expectations accordingly. Next question, what if the player misses a session? We've talked about this before, but surely we'll talk about it more in the future. Once again, make sure your players know whether you're going to skip the game whenever any player is missing, or whether you'll keep playing even if you're just down to two or even one player. And finally, what happens when a player character dies? Should they expect to roll up a new character, or will resurrection be on the table? This is also a good time to find out in Session Zero whether somebody plans to leave the game if their character dies, or at least if they die permanently. That way you aren't discovering that sort of critically important detail in the middle of a game session. And at this point, I think you're good to go. You can create your characters. Because I really would recommend everybody wait and create their characters together for Session Zero. It's really vital for making sure that everybody is on the same page. I made a whole bunch of videos about creating characters and creating backstories where specifically they were created in a vacuum because I think you should know how to do that if you're looking to be a dungeon master or a game master in any setting, but or in any system. But let's be super clear, it's really ideal to actually work together to make your characters at the end of a session zero is a perfect time to do that. Look, this is a short video, but we're not done with this subject, not really. I'll continue to talk about some of these individual topics in more depth in future videos, and we might talk a lot more about Session Zeros in the future. I'm also going to include some of my favorite resources in the doobly-doo, like Ginny D's Session Zero video, Matt Colville's video about pitching your campaign, and Mike Shea's video about how to pitch a campaign in a one-page document. But I believe this document should be a great starting point for you to work with your players and set expectations. Fundamentally, the reason we run a Session Zero is to help avoid conflict later in the campaign. Whether that's keeping people from feeling uncomfortable when certain content arises in the game, or making sure your players know your feelings on multi-classing before they plan out the next 20 levels of their character. A well-run Session Zero can help cover a ton of potential issues before they come up, and hopefully this worksheet helps you out with that. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I also really want to thank a viewer from Germany named... I assume Johannes, who sent me an email earlier this year. I've been debating whether or not to make this sort of Session Zero-centric video, but then Johannes' email really confirmed that I have a habit of talking about all these topics that should have been handled during a Session Zero. So many of them wound up making a playlist about them. Uh, so thank you, Johannes. That email helped kick me in the butt to make this video and finally get it on the schedule and get it made. Even though you sent that uh, comment in uh, April. Look, I, I got to it eventually. It still counts. I'm a good YouTuber. If you want to support the video, there are a few great ways to do that. Uh, the first is to subscribe and ring the bell. When you do that, you get to see videos as soon as they come out. And the earlier you watch one of my videos, the better it performs and the more my channel grows. If you want to support me financially, Patreon is the best place to do that. Every Patreon supporter really helps me out a lot. If you want to hang out with other awesome people, join my Discord server. We've got a really lovely community there. Uh, if you want to watch me film some of these videos and also play video games, uh, follow me on Twitch. And if you want to stay up to date when I have news to share, uh, sign up for my newsletter. All those links are in the doobly-doo below. Uh, if you want some help defining terms before your session zero, uh, check out this video on the many forms of metagaming. Until next time, play fair and have fun.